Well, the first reaction was panic, utter panic, because we, our, your expenses go on. You pay your electric bill, you pay your all your other costs, and the income just stopped. So that's a pretty dire circumstance to be in. We got together and said, boy, we got to do something. What do we do now? Where do we go? How do we make this work? If we go back six months ago now, you'd say what was happening in the fall of 2019? Everybody was doing well. It was, things were really humming along and restaurant business was, was very profitable. How many of those are going to open back up or not? It depends on who you ask or who you're reading. It's gonna be a new, a new normal for all of us and we've got to figure out where we can go. You know, we couldn't shelter in place. We couldn't just shut the doors down. You know, there were, there were greens that had to be watered. We had to take care of them. We, we couldn't just walk away from those and, and let those plants die. You know, I don't think that we really fully appreciated what kind of magnitude it was gonna have. This year, the hospitality industry has been brought to its knees and even the Michelin-starred restaurants are struggling but it's not just the restaurants themselves who feel the impact. For 35 years, a farm called The Chef's Garden has dedicated its business to the culinary industry, supplying produce, herbs, microgreens to many renowned restaurants. What also makes them unique, regenerative practices. But in March, their business was abruptly halted the land is owned and operated by the Jones family and Farmer Lee Jones is at the forefront. An extension of the business is the Culinary Vegetable Institute, a place specifically designed to explore the world of vegetables and chefs. This is a story of their response to the pandemic, their history and their spirit. It shows that even when you're faced with unexpected challenges, anyone can find the courage, confidence, and work together to forge a new path. It's easier to lead when things are going right. Probably even more important to lead during a crisis. As a way to keep a farm afloat, the Jones family decided to begin a home delivery system. Now anyone and everyone can enjoy their produce from home. And our model had been focused on taking care of chefs. Yeah. And this was just appeared to be a natural pivot. These restaurants have got a problem. We're closed down. People need to eat and are able to harvest that product and wash it and clean it and send it directly to a home. And so the pivot to a nationwide home delivery made sense. We see ourselves in the restaurant industry. We're an extension of the kitchen. Lee came to our leadership team meeting and said, we need to get these home delivery boxes out to our chefs as quickly as possible. We need to make sure that we communicate that we're concerned for them and their teams. The product that you've been getting through our kitchens is now available delivered to your home. As a means to survive, until you're back as a customer. You know, we're not out of the woods, but we've got a shot. The culinary industry has been helping support keeping us here. You know, that community, that culinary community has, has been here to help us. If we had not developed those relationships over the last 35 years, we would not have been able to do what we did when the virus broke. There's many chefs who are gonna watch this, many people in the industry who may have lost the business. You know when that big wave comes and it just knocks you over and you can't seem to get up? You said, okay, we've got to change the business plan. What would you say to that person who's struggling now? I mean, you get up. As devastating as it was, and as I've described, it's very painful. You know, out of that came something new. And we, I think that the biggest success, it's not a rags to riches story by any stretch of the imagination. We've never painted it that way. We don't think of it that way. I feel like one of the richest people in the world, not from a financial standpoint, but our family got to work together on a common vision. And uh, a lot of, there were a lot of people out there that told us we couldn't, couldn't do it. The challenges we face early on can prepare us for those that come later 
And sometimes sacrifice can lead to serendipity. 2020 wasn't the first time that the Jones family faced hardship. In the early 1980s, the Jones family lost their first farm because a hailstorm destroyed most of the property. But they searched for new opportunities and the search led them to something new and wonderful. You f how did you feel at 19 when the business went at that time? I stood shoulder to shoulder with my mom and dad and my brother and sister, all of our neighbors, all of our competitors, everybody that was there to celebrate our failure. And they auctioned off every single piece of equipment that we owned right down to my mother's car and our house. And, um, you know, we crawled away. And it's something that you don't forget. It was a disaster. The kids, it was terrible for them. So we started back over again. But I just kept working. And my feeling has always been, no matter what you feel or how you feel, if you keep working and do something good for people along the way, then you've done what you're supposed to do on this earth. There was, uh, there was sacrifice, but uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. If we had not come through that, survived that, experienced that together as a family, we would have been missing part of our story. We, were at, we started back over when we lost the farm in the early 80s at Farmer's Markets. You know, it was at the Farmer's Markets where we met a chef. She was European influenced and she was, the, her name was Iris Balin. And, um, you know, she wanted us to grow for the quality, grow for the flavor, grow specific varieties that she had experienced in Europe. And it was just so different than what we were doing and what the universities were teaching. It was all about big volume. And she went to Lee and she wanted to buy squash this big. Now keep in mind, my background was selling squash this big by the semi load. And not only that, she wanted to leave the flowers on it. <laughs> you know, to hear something like that was just. Well, they had a list of 12 vegetables they wanted us to grow, none of which I'd ever even heard of, let alone knew how to grow. Not, not even the foggiest imagination that they existed. I spent the whole winter learning what those vegetables were and how to grow them. And we grew them successfully the next year. And that's where it all started. We met chefs at the farmer's markets, which meant they had an unmet need from their normal purveying options. And there was a light bulb moment that said, hey, wait a minute, there's, there's something here. It sort of got our radar going and we're reading on a bigger scope. And of course, Jean-Louis comes to the Watergate Hotel in DC. We're reading about him and we reached out to him and he said, look, these guys want to do it the right way. We got to give them enough business to keep them in business. He really saw it from a bigger picture. 100% of our business is with restaurants. And we've been so grateful over the last 35, 37 years that chefs have taken us under their wing and given us an opportunity to be able to be growers for them. Really and honestly, chefs have taught us the food business because what was really important to them became important to us. And that's how we grew the chef's garden. Early on in the, in the 90s, chefs were bringing us little vials of seed and said, could you grow this? I had this variety of tomato in my home country. And so we've spent our life trying to figure out where do you find those varieties? And then how do you treat the soil so that when you put that tomato in it, the soil is healthy enough to allow the genetic traits to express themselves and you get what our customer's customer really desires. Not only are you sustaining but you're regenerative in that you're growing and it's yeah. building yeah. and I think that we're at that regenerative stage. I think that it's a model that can work on a much bigger scale and I think it's the future. It's sustainable but it's regenerative. The chef's garden also connects chefs with agriculture through the Culinary Vegetable Institute. Jamie Simpson is the executive chef and he's at the forefront of the business alongside with the Jones family. The Culinary Vegetable Institute, it's a place that exists in nature, with nature, in agriculture, with farmers. It's a place where chefs come to learn about where their food comes from. It's a place where chefs come to learn about 
new cooking techniques or new pieces of technology in the kitchen. It's a place where guests come to do the same. A walk through the garden goes a long way. What you smell, follow it. You know, what you, what, what you see, find it. And what you hear, listen to it. You know, and to walk through the garden is, is to walk through just this ever-changing kaleidoscope. Every single day is different. The bees are out, the honey is coming, it's great. The wax is new and white. It's just naturally poetic. People want to know where their food's coming from. Customers in dining rooms want to know where their food's coming from. We spend a lot of time learning how to prepare the perfect steak, but very little time on carrots and squash and potatoes. So when the chef is challenged with creating vegetable forward food, it's a new learning curve. We take a plant from start to finish and we look at it as a life cycle, all right? Um, we don't always have squash, but when we don't have squash, maybe we have squash blooms. If we don't have squash blossoms, maybe we have squash stems and leaves, a little petite squash. Larger squash, we'll shave the bigger ones, we'll peel the stems, we'll blanch the leaves, we'll blend those into an emulsion. We're gonna bring this together in a way that um, tells a story and offers diversity with a single ingredient. You know, people don't often realize that asparagus becomes a small Christmas tree if you let it. Leaves, blooms, seed pods, if we can find them. It's just naturally poetic. You know, and it just draws you into this, this world. And if you look at it as food, it's even more delicious. You know, you hear about food waste, but it's nothing. It's actually nothing compared to actual agricultural waste. And I believe a connection with farmers from a culinary perspective is one of the most valuable things we can offer to agriculture our job to teach people how to use things and it'll help immensely in the end of the day manage waste, agricultural waste. It makes sense for restaurants to spend more time on vegetables because there's more margin in them for restaurants. And moving forward, margin is going to be everything. Absolutely. Right. Especially after this, what's happened. Um, what do you think the future will be? I think that everybody gets that we're going to be a plant-forward, plant-based future. This was a giant wave, and it knocked a lot of us down. But we're going to get up, and we're going to figure it out, and we're going to find a new way. There's going to be new businesses, new creativity, new opportunities that arise out of this. It's not ever going to be the normal that we knew. It's the new normal. Necessity is the mother of invention, and there has been some real necessity that we're all living through, but we are gonna get through it, and we are gonna survive, and we're gonna come out the other side, and we're gonna be all the smarter for it. What's the perfect day for you? Waking up, getting to go to the vegetable farm. We love what we do. I can't think of doing anything else. And it's a family. We're, we're gonna survive through this because of the support of chefs but we're also going to survive this because of the family that's got the chutzpah to fight. People really want to buy and support genuine family businesses that want to do the right thing for the right reasons. They can see right through when that's not genuine. And we love what we do and we love to talk about it. So come to the farm and let's talk about what we do, and let's talk about regenerative farming, and let's walk out through the field and hear the bees in the squash field and experience nature. Hardship can strike without warning, but how we face adversity is what matters most. The lessons we learn mold us into who we are. The Jones family knew they had to adapt when faced with the pandemic, and they did it. I have hope that we will learn to be more thankful for life itself. The river of life will always keep flowing. The key is to ride with the current, 
to the chef's garden. If we lose you, our industry would lose its best source of seasonal garden treasures. When I was a youngster, if somebody had a problem in the neighborhood, we all went and helped. We have to help each other. It's the only way we survive. Whatever form that help might take. And that's one characteristic that the boys have really picked up on. They both do a lot more good than anybody gives them credit for. And I'm just as proud of that. As they are on their ability to run the business. Bob Jones Sr. held on to his life to celebrate 60 years of marriage to Barbara. If there's only one thing you take away from this show, please remember the last words he shared with me. We have to help each other. It's the only way we'll survive, whatever form that help may take.